Hi, my name is Christy and I'm going to show you how to set up an open trailer 4000 series sonar today. So first we've got to disconnect the trailer from the truck. First you want to grab your tongue wheel and it's keyed so it's only going to go on one way. Next, you want to release both safety chains. And disconnect the lights. Then release the hitch pin and pop the hitch. Then you want to crank the jack until the hitch releases from the trailer pump. Now that we're disconnected, you can drive the truck away. Now we need to level out the trailer, so you're going to put all four leveling jacks down and then lower the tongue jack. First you want to remove the pin, put the jack down, put the pin back in, and start cranking. To help prevent settling, put a wood block underneath. Once all four jacks are down, you want to remove the tongue wheel and then you can finish leveling. Once the wheel is off, make sure that the jack is completely raised. To ensure proper leveling, place the level on the Sodar frame. Now the level reads 0.0. .0. That's what we want. Let's check the other side. This side's level two, so we can proceed. Now it's time for us to put up the cuffs. I'm gonna show you an easy way how you can figure out which cuff goes where. So you wanna lay both of the long cuffs parallel to each other. You want the hinges on the inside, and then you want the 90 degree angles both on the same side. So using the long cuffs as the reference point, Know that the 90 degree angle is the back side. Then you want to take the shorter cuff and lay it down, still with the hinge on the inside, and then the angled side is going to be to your right or my left in this image. To make sure the cuffs are oriented the correct way, you want to look at the short cuffs and make sure they're pointing to your right, and you want to look at the long cuffs and make sure that they're pointing to the front. Just for your point of reference, this is going to be the back cuff, this is the left, that's the right, and that's the front cuff. Now it's time to mount the cuffs. I'm going to take the right cuff, and we're going to put it on the right side of the sodar. Now let's look at the sodar. This is the right side of the sodar. This is the back of the sodar. This is the left side of the sodar. And this is the front of the sodar. I'm back on the right side of the sodar, and I have the right cuff. You want to make sure that the foam is facing out, and the hinge is facing up, and we're going to line up the hinge. The hinges are lined up, now slide in the cuff. Now that the right cuff is up, repeat with the other three cuffs. Now that all four cuffs are in place, we're going to put the cuffs up, start with the back and the left. To keep the cuffs in place, you'll need an eye bolt, place it through the top hole with the washer on each side, and then you'll tighten the nut. on each corner. Now that all the cuffs are up and the eye bolts are in place, it's time to do the hex bolts. There's 16 in all, one goes on the bottom and three along each side. Just like the eye bolts, there's going to be a washer on each side and then you tighten the nut. Now that the cuffs are up and the trailer is level, it's time to find the rotation angle. So you'll need a compass. To find the rotation angle, you want to shoot the compass down the left side of the fiberglass enclosure. Our rotation angle is at 335 degrees. We'll need to enter that into the SODAR later. Now it's time to put up the solar panels. Notice the hole in the aluminum bar on the solar panel. 
this is for the solar coupler, so it's important that it goes closest to the other solar panel. Each panel has one. Now it's time to hang the solar panels. These hooks go in the solar eye bolts. To keep the solar panel in place, place the pin through the hook, lock it on the other side. There's one for each hook. Now we repeat with the other panel. Now it's time to adjust the angle of the solar panel. So we have to put solar arm bars in place. Start with the smaller side. One washer on each side. And tighten the nut. Now take the larger end of the arm bar and mount it on the trailer side. and the nut. To adjust the solar panel, remove the middle bolt. You can slide the arm in or out. And replace the bolt to keep it in place. Now do it again with the other solar panel really important that they have the same angle. Now that the solar angles have been set, place the solar coupler on the aluminum bar. One bolt through each hole. One washer and one bolt on each side. And this is going to add extra rigidity. high wind environments, place the solar frame brace through the brackets and secure with the bolt. Now secure the bottom part of the brace. And repeat with the other side. Now we can plug in the solar panels, but first we have to make sure that the breakers are all in the off position. First, let's check the breaker in the battery box. Pressing the red button disconnects power from the batteries. You can tell because the lever pops out. Now let's open the charger box and make sure that the solar panel breakers are in the off position. They are, so we're good to go. Now that the breakers are in the off position, we can connect the solar panels place the male connector into the female connector, and again, place the male connector into the female connector. If you need to disconnect, you can press on the side tabs and pull. Now that the solar panels are connected, let's turn on the breakers. Close the tab in the battery box to resume power. Flip the switches to the on position for the solar breakers. Ensure that the battery voltage and solar amps display on the solar charger. The display cycles between the two. Now we can start plugging in the connectors. Notice that each connector is different so we don't plug something into the wrong place. The number of connectors you have are based on the accessories that come with your system. Be sure to plug in all of the accessories. Now we can turn on the power to the system and the amplifier. Watch the LCD screen until the system boots up. Sometimes clock syncing takes a while, depending on access to a time server. Now that the system is pulsing, there are two more important steps. Setting the rotation angle and setting the clock. To set the time, press X to go to the LCD combo screen. Enter your combo. Ours is the default value 0000. Press check. Select control from the main menu. Select clock settings. From here you can set your time zone and date and time. Setting the time zone and time is very important when correlating with other instruments. Be sure to do this. For more information on setting time zone, date and time, or other features, please refer to the LCD manual. To set the rotation angle, press X to get to the LCD combo. 
The combo is set to 0000. zero, zero, zero. Press check to go to the main menu. Select operational parameters. Select antenna rotation angle. Use the arrows to enter the rotation angle. Ours is 335 from when we use the compass. Press check to enter the angle and then select yes to make the change. Changes will take effect at the next wind table output. Congratulations, now your SODAR is set up and running. Thanks for joining me.